What your leaders say is true. This was all my fault. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers Theory. Today's is going to cover if Optimus let thousands of people die in order to make a point in Transformers Dark of the Moon. And interestingly enough, a lot of people are divided when it comes to this question. Some believe Prime wanted to teach Earth a lesson by letting the Decepticons take over the planet after humanity unanimously agreed to exile the Autobots in the hopes of appeasing Sentinel Prime and Megatron. While others believe that Prime was strictly following and respecting the orders given to him by the humans, thus rendering the Chicago takeover strictly the government's fault. So to get to the bottom of this, it's best to first understand what point Prime is making. Prime's point in Dark of the Moon was that the Decepticons will continue to stay and cause havoc even if the Autobots leave Earth. Now this point was not actually made in the Dark of the Moon movie, but was carried over from the previous film, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. You see, after the destruction of the Allspark and the Decepticon leader Megatron, Optimus theorized that the Decepticons would leave the planet. However, this wouldn't be the case since the cons continued to stay. Skirmishing with Nest and the Autobots when the opportunity arose, this led many government officials feeling like the Autobots were the cause of the Decepticons' prolonged stay. The most vocal of this belief was the National Security Advisor Director Theodore Galloway. He concluded that since there was no artifact that the Decepticons were after, the only reason reason why they were continuing to stay on Earth was to hunt down the Autobots. He would ask Prime if the Autobots would leave Earth peacefully if the government would deny them further asylum. The Autobot leader replied that they would comply if asked, stating that freedom was their right. But Prime would ask Galloway a question of his own. What if the Autobots left, and he was wrong? This question of Prime's would become a reality in Transformers Dark of the Moon. Hours after the Autobots were exiled from American shores, the Decepticons took over and decimated Chicago. As for context to explain how we got to this point, Early in the film, Nesta and the Autobots discovered that Sentinel Prime, the former Autobot leader, crash-landed on the moon in 1961. Optimus and Ratchet went to the moon in order to rescue him. They brought him back to Earth and Optimus revived him using the Matrix of Leadership. However, unbeknownst to Prime and the bots, Sentinel Prime this whole time was working with the Decepticons. He showed his true colors once he decided to kill the Autobot weapon specialist Ironhide. He would then additionally destroy the Nest base and steal five pillars from the vault, which could be used to form a space bridge. Sentinel Prime would use those five pillars to open a space bridge to the moon which allowed hundreds of Decepticons to come to Earth and ultimately ravage Washington, D.C. This attack made public perception on the Autobots fall further down the drain. And after this attack, Sentinel Prime gave the United Nations a message, saying that the Decepticons wouldn't plan any future attacks if the Autobots were immediately exiled from Earth. This caused Congress to swiftly pass legislation to exile the Autobots from American shores, ending the military alliance with them. And so, the Autobots were taken to Florida in order to be boarded onto the Xanthium at the Kennedy Space Center. As Sam walked up to Prime to give a final goodbye, Prime would tell him that this whole fiasco was his fault and that telling the government to trust Sentinel Prime was a huge mistake. The last thing he would tell Sam is that government leaders had spoken, and that from here the fight will be in their hands. As the Autobot spacecraft ascended, Starscream destroyed it, and seemingly its occupants. Thinking the Autobots were dead, Megatron ordered the Decepticons to take over Chicago. Several motherships arrived to disengorge a large amount of orbital assault carriers, while ground forces took to the streets. A huge portion of the city's population was slaughtered when the Decepticons sealed off the city. However, unbeknownst to everyone else during this time, the Autobots didn't die. They actually never boarded the ship but instead one of its booster rockets, which landed safely in the Atlantic Ocean during the ship's ascent. Eventually, the Autobots show up to Chicago and save Sam, Epps, and a handful of Ness soldiers in the nick of time from a Decepticon orbital assault carrier. And it's what Optimus says next that sparks this whole debate. Your leaders will now understand. Decepticons will never leave your planet alone. And we needed them to believe we had gone. As I stated at the beginning of the video, a lot of people interpret this as Optimus letting the Decepticons take over Chicago to prove government leaders wrong, while others believe Prime was strictly following and respecting the orders given to him by the humans, thus rendering the Chicago takeover the government's fault. So who's right and who's wrong? 
Well, here's my interpretation. Those who believe Prime let Chicago fall into Decepticon hands in order to make a point are misinterpreting what Prime actually said. As we know, Prime stated, your leaders will now understand. Decepticons will never leave your planet alone. And we needed them to believe we had gone. To clarify, folks misinterpret the them as the government in the phrase, and we needed them to believe we had gone. The them in this statement is actually referring to the Decepticons. We know this since Prime knew from the beginning that once they were exiled, something bad was bound to happen. Hence why he ordered everyone to hide in the booster rocket instead of the main ship so they could clean up the inevitable mess Megatron would make. This allowed the Autobots to have the much-needed element of surprise, which gave them a fighting chance against the cons. Now, you could say that the them could also refer to the government, since the bots never made an effort to communicate and coordinate with the military after they splashed down in the Atlantic. And from this angle, it does seem like the bots wanted the government to believe that they were gone. However, this isn't the case. They were unable to tell Ness that they were still alive, because the Decepticons jammed all United States military satellites in order to prevent the military from monitoring their movements. And we know this due to a line General Morshower says, Our satellites have been jammed. We have no way to monitor the enemy's movement. Now, despite these satellites being jammed, surely the Autobots could have just arisen from the water and walked back to the Kennedy Space Center in order to coordinate a counterattack against the Decepticons with Nest. However, they wouldn't be able to do this since, as I stated earlier, the Autobots needed the element of surprise. If they would have arisen from the water, they would have been spotted by Starscream. Furthermore, it's highly likely that as soon as the Autobots splashed down, they made their way to Chicago. I come to this conclusion because Cape Canaveral and Chicago are very far apart. If we assume the Autobots hightailed it to Chicago seconds after splashing down in the Atlantic, it would still take them about 18 hours to get there, a time discrepancy that more or less matches up with the events on screen. So with that misinterpretation sorted out, allow me to move on to the second misinterpretation, which is the main one I see a lot of people make. The line, your leaders will now understand, Decepticons will never leave your planet alone, should be interpreted as Optimus saying that the government will now understand that the cons will never leave humanity alone, even when cooperated with. Now, the misinterpretation people make here is that the government actually believes Sennel's promise of a peace treaty. However, the government knew from the beginning that the cons would never hold up their end of the bargain. How do I know this? Well, after Sentinel destroyed the Autobot base, Ness proceeded to do everything in their power to hunt Sentinel Prime down. Sentinel hit the ball. Took the pillars. Come on, let's go. All right, notify the 101st Airborne. We need to hunt this thing down. Furthermore, before the invasion of Chicago, but after the Autobots' exile, a tactical police unit was called in when Megatron and Sentinel were spotted on top of the jeweler's building. If the government truly believed that the cons would play ball with them, they wouldn't allow anyone to authorize an attack on Megatron and Sentinel. However, the main piece of evidence that supports my claim is the scene where Optimus is talking to Sam. He tells him that government leaders told him that they wanted to fight the Decepticons on their own without the Autobots' help. But your leaders have spoken. From here, the fight will be your own. So with that said, I hope that proves to you that the government was well aware that the Decepticons wouldn't hold up their end of the bargain, and that they were planning to take care of the Decepticons themselves. You now may be wondering why the government exiled the Autobots if they knew the cons were planning an attack. And well, the reason why that decision was made was because there was a lot of government resentment towards the Autobots from government officials, which made them think that the military was more capable than the Autobots when it came to hunting down Decepticons. They were banking off the hope that they would get more time to make a coordinated military attack against the Decepticons if they cooperated with them by exiling the bots. However, that plan severely backfired when the Decepticons attacked Chicago a few hours after Starscream took out the Xanthium. So, with all that information in hand, I can finally directly answer if Optimus let thousands of people die in order to make a point. And well, for all intents of purposes, he didn't. People have this idea that Prime was bitter that the government exiled him and the bots. But this is not the case since he understood why the government went through with it. Despite him not agreeing with their decision, he respected it by letting the humans have the freedom of choice. Furthermore, Optimus views this whole situation as his fault. 
Since his decision to revive Sentinel indirectly caused Ironhide's death, the DC invasion, and the fall of Chicago, Dark of the Moon is kind of a redemption arc for Optimus, since he is motivated to do whatever it takes to correct a mistake that caused thousands of innocent lives to be lost. He engineers this whole plan in order to save the citizens of Chicago from the Decepticons. And in the end, he takes the life of the very person he chose to revive, concluding his redemption arc. So no, Optimus Prime did not let thousands die to make a point. Prime was simply saying I told you so with that speech about the government leaders. And he's not wrong since he told them that the Decepticons could not be trusted, but officials thought they knew better and tried to outcon the cons without the Autobots' help. And well, we know where that decision got them. So with all that said, in my opinion Optimus did not let thousands die in order to make a point. However, his decision to revive Sentinel indirectly led to the death of thousands of innocent people. But hey, that's just my interpretation. If you don't agree, that's totally fine. Feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And with that said, now you know if Optimus let thousands of people die in order to make a point in Transformers Dark of the Moon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Without you guys, trans theories would not be where it is today, so a big fat thank you to all of you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro.